Saxon Math 7-6, Lesson 113, Ratio Problems with Totals. Uh, I alluded to this development when we first started doing ratio boxes with those, uh, ratios with those tic-tac-toe boxes. And I told you that later we were going to add a total. Well, today that time has come. Um, so, this is the way we drew them first. Uh, ratio, I said this first column was where we put the ratio numbers in. This is where we put the actual. I said that I wasn't going to write ratio and actual every time. I would just put the R and the A. I did it again just since we're talking about the box. Um, in the problem that we're going to do in just a hot minute here, we're going to talk about the ratio of football players to band members. Okay. Football players to band members. So I'm going to say football players to band members. You know what? My wrist has other things to do besides just write math problems out, as does yours. So use abbreviations whenever hopeful, whenever useful. Um, okay, and then this time we want to have a total column. Not a column, a total row. The columns stay the same. We just add one more row. So here's the way it works. Example 113.1. There's just the one example. Here's our story. The ratio of football players to band members on the football field was two to five. For every two football players, there were five band members. Altogether, there were 175 football players and band members on the football field. 175 total. How many football players were on the field? So we put an X by the number we want to know. Okay? I'm going to read it again and just you can just see how I filled it in. Um, the ratio of football players to band members. I always write them in the order the problem says them. On the football field was 2 to 5. Altogether, there were 175 football players and band members on the football field. How many football players were on the field? So we can see right away that we want to build a ratio with two of these three rows. But we need to fill in a blank first. The ratio total, we simply add those two together to get seven. Now we can see, okay, we don't really need this information about the band members. If we can just kind of lightly cross that out, don't erase it, don't scribble it out hard because you might decide, wait a minute, I did it wrong, I need that. So don't make life too hard for yourself. But now we see we don't need that row of information because it's missing data. It's not going to help us. So we take the two rows that are complete, including the one with the X in it, because for sure we know we need that information. But this row has two solid numbers that we can use to build our two proportions, and then we can solve the problem from there. So again, we just lift them out and set them over. 2 over 7 equals x over 175. This box formats everything perfectly so that you can just lift your problem right out of it. Beautiful. We're off up to the races here. We're going to cross multiply, and we're going to get 2 times 175. Notice I do not multiply that yet. I just write it out equals 7x, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 7. The reason I don't want to multiply these numbers is because this denominator that's going to come over in a minute very often will go into one or the other of those numbers, and so I don't want to um, make my numbers bigger before I get a chance to see if I can cancel. So we'll multiply at the end. Now, 7 into 175. That seems like a hard number, but I immediately think 7 quarters would be a dollar and 75 cents, right? 7 quarters. So that tells me that 7 must go into 175 25 times. Let's practice. Let's just do it and make sure we're right. 7 into 1, no va. 7 into 17, twice. 14, subtract, 35, there it is. Yay, we proved it. Okay, so now I've got x equals 2 times 25, that's 50 football players. So that means that 
if the ratio of football players to band members is two to five, and we've got 175 kids in all, 50 of them must be football players. And I can double check this by going, oh, two times 25 equals 50, seven times 25 equals 175. So it proves to me mathematically that it works, yay. Okay, that is our only problem for this lesson. I was just looking at John, um, John's solution in the book, and he does it he does it pretty much like me. So that always helps matters when we do it the same. All right, that's lesson 113, you guys. Straightforward, super easy, super useful though. You know how students always ask, but when am I ever gonna use this in real life? Actually, this is something that you can use in real life and it's cool. Okay, bye.